those who wish to can use this time to have a moment of peace and reflect on the events of 9-11. Those who don't, just go to a minute 30 and the video will start. Thank you. Hello, Ray Quasars. So, as I promised, here you go. A little video that explains what um what likes actually mean to us YouTubers. So, really quickly, likes actually mean, um, they're kind of like ratings, like, you like this or you dislike this, so if you do like it, make sure you like it, if you do dislike it, feel free to dislike it, it lets us know what we can improve on, and we usually take all feedback that is necessary, of course some dislikes come from trolls and stuff, but, I mean, it's YouTube, it's the internet, what are you gonna do, this stuff happens, and, uh, basically likes are how our videos get more known, because, the higher the ratings, the uh, better they show up in search results and all that. Actually, YouTube likes to use highly rated videos. Um, as you can see, this is a 5th gen battle. Uh, I know I've been doing 4th gen a lot, and my opponent's actually using dual weather, and I'm using rain. Uh, so this should be interesting. So I actually predict the Tyranitar lead, or even the Ninetales lead would be okay, because... Really, I could have switched to Polytone, but I didn't really need to, which is good. And so, I am going to manage to get off the Spore, and I was hoping that this Tyranitar did not wake up and fire an Ice Beam or Fire Blast or something. If it was carrying either one of those, and it doesn't, which is great, because that means I get up a free Sword Stance. And I get a Mock Punch this Tyranitar, uh, which is a, an easy Oko. With that sword stance, I think it probably would have been an easy Oko without the sword stance, but I didn't want to risk it. I wanted to make sure that Tyranitar went good and down. And uh, so he's going to bring in Skarmory, which more or less kind of walls my Breloom, because I really don't have anything to touch Skarmory save Mock Punch, and I'm assuming this is a physically variant of Skarmory, so I don't really want to stay in too, mu too long. So I am going to go ahead and switch out into Politoed to go ahead and... Uh, Maybe threaten the Skarmory out, maybe not. It's at least still asleep, which is good. And uh, hit my Hydro Pump, which is awesome. First turn Hydro Pump hitting is great. But of course, he's going to have Sturdy. And he does wake up this turn and gets up one layer of Spikes, which is... Eh, one layer is negligible, fairly, because I can work around it. So I'm going to go for the Hydro Pump and finish this off. So that gets rid of the Skarmory. And right here, he is going to go for the Protect, and I thought he was going for the Protect to get up his, uh, to get up his Toxic, but he doesn't, and I don't want to really stay in in case I do miss, and the Ice Beam would really kind of be more useful. So I am going to bring in my Imposter Ditto to kind of figure out what this, uh, this Gliscor is doing, and I'm like, okay, so it has Ice Fane, so I want to get out of here, because I want to save Ditto for later, maybe. And I want to bring in Sizzler, because Sizzler should be able to take an Ice Fane or an Earthquake very nicely. So the Imposter Ditto came in handy to figure out the set that he was running, which is great. And he is going to go for the Earthquake, which uh, does a fairly decent amount, considering that I have some bulk on this Scizor. 
I mean, I was going to use this Gliscor to just set up, set up, but now it's not looking like a good thing. So I decided to switch that and go into my Rotom Wash, because Rotom Wash completely pretty much walls this thing. And if I can get him to not be behind a substitute, I can burn it and make this thing a lot weaker. Uh, but that's not going to probably be the case for a little bit, so I'm just going to Hydro Pump, break the sub, and then I'm going to see what he wants to do this next turn. Maybe he wants to stay in, maybe he wants to switch out. I'm not really sure right now. But, I mean, at least I got the Tyranitar down, and the Scizor down, so it's it's a 6-4 right now. And then he's going to bring in Ninetales, and I'm like, granted, you have the sun up now, so Hydro Pump's going to be weaker, but there's that's really a bad time to bring in Ninetales. Because, I mean, look how much Hydro Pump did, even in the sun. Okay? And I'm actually a bulky attacker, which means I'm not fully invested in special attacks. So that's how insane... Uh, that's how insane Rotom can be with Hydro Pump. Uh, or Hydro Pump itself. So I figure that... going I could have gone in Polytone, but... Obviously, going from Water Type to Water Type would... Ensue an Energy Ball of some sort. And so I decided to bring in... Imposter Ditto to kind of figure out the set, and I saw the Hidden Power, so I was assuming he was Hidden Power Ground, but obviously he knows I'm Scarfed, so he does switch out, which is okay for me, because that means I get to go ahead and get off damage on this Infernape, and then I brain in Politoed, he hits his Stone Edge, and I'm like, well, at least it wasn't crit. That did a lot of damage, though. Fortunately, I am faster, and I am going to hit that Hydro Pump. Actually, this game, there was like no hacks whatsoever. There was none that actually even mattered uh which was very very strange because at least like usually the hacks factor in games is pretty high, in battles i have is pretty high this not so much so i decided to bring in my uh meloetta as i'm told it's pronounced meloetta and he goes for the hidden power which apparently must be the hidden power dark i'm not maybe he misgened and meant to have it as hidden power grass, hidden power ice, something, but he went for hidden power dark, and so he is going to get up his stealth rocks, which now that two entry hazards are in, I'm not going to want to switch out too much, but that's okay, because now I burned his bronze on, did you see this bulky Rotom just tank that, I mean, like, I took seven damage, literally seven damage, and freaking got all of it back in leftovers, and look how much that Thunderbolt did. Bulky Attacker Rotom is absolutely mentally insane. Wow. I mean, look at this. <laughs> oh, wow. This is great. And so, I am going to Thunderbolt just to finish him off. He could have honestly risked it and switched in nine tails, but of course his nine tails would be dead then, so that's not really, that's not much of a good idea. So, he is going to bring in nine tails now, obviously. I'm going to switch out, this time into Breloom, in case he predicted the switch into my Ditto, I wouldn't have taken that much damage, but he's just going to go for the straight energy ball, maybe he, like, maybe he was trying some level 3 predictions or something, I'm not really sure, but it didn't work out, so I go for the Mach Punch and finish off the Ninetales, which is great, and then he is going to bring in his uh, Gliscor, unfortunately, yeah, I forgot forgot he still had this thing but at least it's like 6-2 now so it's looking pretty good looking pretty darn good honestly and uh he is gonna go for the ice vein and i freaking live like okay that's absolutely mental actually no it's not even 6-3 it's 6-1 this is gg for him that's right i did ko the inferno uh so yeah get rid of the glide score See you later, Glide Score. And <laughs> that's gonna be the match. Body bagged. What? Ah, uh, and this is like an actual better body bag than the last one I posted because my opponent somewhat knew what he was doing. So that's funny. So like body bag. Hope you guys liked it. And uh hope you guys like the beginning for those who decided to do it. For those who didn't, it's fine. I understand that we're all kinda getting sick of all the nine eleven extravaganza and all that. But, you know, let's let's just go ahead and leave on a good note and uh, comment, like, and subscribe because those likes really, really help me out. And thanks, guys. See ya.